Hello and welcome to this quick tip. This is all around how I've made the wing removable for easier transport on my AR wing build. Now for those of you that have been following along that won't be news to you at all. I have been having a whale of a time with Arduplane on the AR wing using a Matek flight controller. It has a LiDAR on there. It's capable of autonomous flight. It is a brilliant model, but it was a little bit too long to fit in the boot of my new car. And also with these bigger wings, sometimes you do want the chance to take the wings off for easier transport. Some models really think about it and are really clever. So things like the ZOHD Dart have connectors. When you plug the wings into place, they automatically make the connections. But the AR wing isn't really built for that, despite the fact that inside there is a little thumb screw that holds the wing into place. Now, the way I've built mine means that there are multiple things in each wing. On the right hand side, I have both the GPS and I also have a servo as well. And the GPS has quite a few connections in it, actually it has six, it has power, ground, transmit, receive, and also the two lines for the I squared C connection coming back into the flight controller. So if I make that wing separate, then I'm going to have to make those six connections off and the other three connections, the plus five volts, ground and signal for the servo. However, on the other wing, which is a little bit easier, I only have two things out on there. One of them is the camera, and that's at the front, and there's no control of the camera from the flight controller, so I only have to worry about the ground plus five volts and the signal, and the other bit is the bit back here, which is all of the bits for that other servo. Now, by default, they would run into the main center cockpit area and plug into the flight controller. But what I can do is because the wing is held in place by that thumb screw, I can just undo that thumb screw and have a couple of connectors in place so that I can plug the camera in and I can also plug in the servo too. Now, the big dilemma that I had here is what connections am I going to use to connect up the servo and the camera back into the flight controller? Now, the obvious choice is to use servo style DuPont leads. Now, these little servo connectors, the kind that we're already using, if I cut the cable in half and solder on the cables like I've done here, then that's going to allow me to unplug and plug them in. And if I use the kind with the slot here, it guarantees that I'm not going to put them in the wrong way around. I've also 3D printed a little support to stop the cable falling inside and that would work okay. And in fact, that's how I've been flying it and it's been great. The only issue that I potentially got is that these connections are not really designed to be made and unmade hundreds of times. So that over time, there is going to be degradation of those pins and the, the pins and the sockets inside those vary immensely in quality. So ideally, you're going to want some kind of gold plated ones to help with corrosion. But you're going to have to watch even then potentially for the signal getting upset. What I'm going to do over the next week or so is to replace them with these. Now, these are the AMAS MR30 connectors. I happen to get these from 3DXR. They have a full range of connectors up there. I'll put a link down in the description. And the really cool thing about these is these are much, much heavier duty connectors, three pole connectors. And not only that, they're also designed to only fit together one way. So it means that I cannot fit the servo connection or the power ground and signal wire from the camera the wrong way around. And they're also a little bit more robust too. They're a little bit harder to push together and a little bit harder to separate. So in the event of a problem or lots of vibration on the, on the wing, they're not going to wiggle out. Now, it's probably not going to happen with the servo connections, but it's extra peace of mind. So that's what I've done with my wing. Some of you have asked me about it and hopefully that explains. I would pick the wing that's got the least number of connections on and I'd use something like these connectors to cut the wire in the middle and to have the female and male so that you can plug them together. And by using connectors like either the servo ones, if it's only going to be very, relatively small number of times you're going to make and unmake them or something like the MR30 connections if you're going to be using something a little bit chunkier then that's the way that I would do it. I've got this big bag of MR30 connections here because in future as I build other wings I'm automatically going to be setting them up to make the wings removable and quick to pop back in place too. 
Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.